feminists have simply outdone themselves, when it comes to complete hypocrisy that is. Aren't they supposed to want men to be more sensitive, less male privilege less macho? Okay, let's just lay it all out here. They think that masculinity is toxic. But take a look at this story Christina Vardanis did on Brad Pitt. The Brad Pitt interview that might destroy your crush on Brad Pitt. We're talking about a grown-up woman with a husband and children here, and no, the article wasn't published in Tiger Beat. It was published in Chatelaine. You know, the magazine that's had Justin Trudeau on the cover since the day of his birth, which, by the way, Vardanis refers to Pitt as Zoolander in this piece, so, um, I think she kind of got a couple people mixed up there. Anyways, Chatelaine is a magazine that publishes countless articles about girl power, body positivity, and of course, feminism. Some of them even belonging to Vardanis. But her article on Pitt's interview with GQ, where he opens up about his divorce and addiction, couldn't display the double standards that feminists have any clearer. In the very first paragraph, she points out her disappointment over her fantasies having been destroyed by the actor's GQ piece, who admittedly sounds a little off throughout the interview. Yeah, but don't objectify women, everyone. It's totally a fine to do so to men, though. You want to know what she thinks is just so, so shameful and so, so gross? When Pitt talks about starting to take a liking to R&B music, taking up sculpting, finding joy in his kids' faces, and saying he won't write a book. Seriously, that's it. I said he sounded off in this piece. Is it because he's an actor slash artist weirdo, or that he's going through a messy divorce, misses his family life, and is recovering from alcohol addiction? Probably a mix of all of that. Look. I don't like celebrities in Hollywood culture, but the publicizing of this divorce gives us a peek into the mind of feminists, and it's an important glimpse that we're getting here. The difference between us and celebrities is that their lives are on display. Am I defending Pitt for doing the article? No. I think it's a stupid idea to talk about personal stuff that an editor can and will twist to sell a magazine. But this isn't really about Brad Pitt's bad decision. It's about the double standards that feminists impose on men. Vardanis, who has written articles referencing the pay gap, gender inequality, and glass ceilings, even goes on in her article to say, I'm all for men expressing vulnerability, but there's vulnerability, and then there's, well, whatever this is. There's always a but, isn't there? And did the author ever stop to think that maybe whatever this is could be some kind of mental illness, like depression? I note she didn't take into consideration that this is a real issue and reference male suicide rates in her article, where men kill themselves 3.5 times more often than women because of things like depression, divorce, feeling ashamed due to job loss, and in turn not being able to provide. How's that for equality? Vardanis clearly didn't stop to think that some men act this way coming out of a divorce because of this exact kind of behavior and shut up coming from her crowd. This it's okay to be vulnerable but only to a certain degree is exactly why men don't want to be vulnerable. Let's face it, real life, things that can happen to anyone like mental illness, divorce and addiction is gross to these people. It ruins their sexual fantasies so just stop it, okay? Feminists like Vardanis are always telling us to do better, to treat women better, but what about men? This article depicts pretty much everything that's wrong with feminists in a few paragraphs. They treat men as second-class citizens that are bound to a set of their ever-shifting rules and goalposts that men will never ever be able to meet with. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting that button if you haven't already, so that you don't miss out on the other side of the story in Canadian news.